I have recorded a video explaining the basic uh, mechanisms of combinatorics and I've uh, really in depth went through how to derive the famous formula and choose n. Uh, so I'm gonna assume that you've seen that video in case if you're interested in more depth and detail on how to work this out here I'm just gonna use the final results to go through this problem uh, the quick way as I have elaborated on this like I said on in the combinatorics video that you can find in this uh, playlist okay uh, you flip uh, 50 fair coins and uh, it's saying uh, how many possible outcomes microstates there are okay so uh, you know the coin could be either heads or tails. There's two possibilities on each uh, To reveal its microstate and uh, So does the second coin so does the third so uh, for part a you have uh, uh, Two on the first coin two on the second coin all the way 50 times till you get to the 50th coin So that would be two to the 50 uh, There's 2 to the 50 microstates possible. Okay, uh, part B. Oh, and by the way, the reason we multiply them uh, is because while the first coin could be either heads or tails, every microstate can exist on the remaining 49 coins. Meaning, if the first coin is heads, you're still gonna have to do the 49 possible uh, different possible heads or tail scenario on the rest of the uh, on the rest of the coins so that's why you'd have to multiply each coin by the uh, uh, different pairings of the rest of the coins and so that's why you multiply all these different microstates 2 times 2 all the way to 50 till you get to 50 coins so it's 2 to the 50 okay uh, so this would be, uh, this here is, uh, right, the, uh, the multiplicity of all the coins. That's the uh, possible outcomes or microstates there are. Okay, how many ways are there of, exact, of getting exactly 25 heads and 25 tails? Okay, so uh, we're going to use the formula. Uh, multiplicity uh, if we have n coins choose small n of them this would be n factorial over uh, n n minus n factorial and again I derived this formula or I showed you some thorough reasoning on how to get to this formula without memorizing it in the video that I indicated so you can watch that video if you're interested. Here I'm just going to use it. So uh, so here we have uh, 25 heads. So I have 50, choose 25 heads. So this would be 50 factorial, or this would be 50, choose 25, right? Th this, this is the same thing as n, choose n. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so uh, 50 choose 25, so this would be 50 factorial, just plug it into the formula, 25 factorial, 25 factorial. And if you do this, you would get 1.26 times 10 to the 14. Okay, for part C, Uh, what's the probability of getting exactly uh, 25 heads uh, and uh, 25 tails? Wait, how, okay, oh, okay, so this was how many ways uh, for part B uh, was how many ways uh, for part C is what's the probability, so that would be the uh, ways of getting 25 heads and 25 tails over the entire multiplicity, the, the multiplicity of all. So, right, so the probability 
of getting 25 heads uh, would be uh, the uh, multiplicity of getting 25 heads divided by the multiplicity all so in other words that would be the answer to part B divided by the answer to part A uh, what's that? 2 to the 50 Uh, now, if the calculator did not take this, you could simplify this using, you know, the factorial stuff. Uh, let me plug it in and see. Uh, it should work. So this would be uh, 50 factorial uh, divided by uh, second. This was uh, 1.264, etc. Many decimals times 10 to the 14. Uh, Eighteen, fourteen, yeah, and then this, and then when I divide these two, I get uh, zero point uh, one one two two three. Okay, for part D. Uh, what's the probability of getting 30 heads and 20 tails? Okay, so uh, probability of 30 heads would be uh, from 50 choose 30 over probability all, right? Or uh, multiplicity all okay so this is 50 factorial over 30 factorial 20 factorial divided by 2 to the 50 and so we get Uh, zero point zero four one nine. Okay, part E. Part E, what's the probability of getting exactly 40 heads and 10 tails? So same thing. So probability of getting 40 heads, this would be 50 total, choose 40, divided by multiplicity all. So this would be 50 factorial divided by 
40 factorial I'm just plugging into the formula divided by 2 to the 50 and we get here uh, notice that uh, we get actually let me say the number then I'll tell you that we know here 9.1 uh, four times 10 to the minus 6 okay so this is a very small probability now uh, notice uh, the uh, here that uh, the pro as we so there's total of 50 coins so the 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 middle the average is 25 25 each so the probability of getting 25 heads was 0 0.11 as soon as we move five heads uh, more into that the probability goes down from 0.11 to 0 0.04 and then as soon as we go to 40 heads the probability becomes way 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 smaller than that which means the most likely outcome is somewhere in the middle is where we have an equal split of coins and heads sort of 25 coins. it's not really equal but it's high it's it's much higher than having more than half the heads so as as you ask for more than the middle uh, then the probability starts going down in either way like I'm sure if you do the 20 heads or the 15 heads you're gonna get almost the same result so so it, it the probability kind of peaks right in the middle uh, sort of the middle and when we plot this we actually what's F here uh, what's the probability of getting 50 heads okay uh, notice what's gonna happen here it should it should come out to be much smaller I should have left the argument here till till the end but it's okay we can complement it you can see that for 50 heads right we expect it to be much much smaller we're gonna do 50 choose 50 right over uh, all and uh, you can see that uh, 50 choose 50 will just be one yeah there's only one way to choose 50 out of 50 uh, but you can plug it in the formula too that's fine uh, just make sure you know that zero factorial is equal to one it's not zero uh, times uh, uh, 50 factorial right so we get one divided by 2 to the 50 and imagine we're dividing here 1 over 2 to the 50 you can imagine how small the number will be uh, if I do it uh, I will get 8.9, 8.882 times 10 to the minus 16. A very small probability of getting all the coins heads. Chances are almost nothing that this will happen. Uh, 882 times 10 to the minus 16. Uh, so as we uh, get away from uh, the middle, uh, the average number of coins being 25 heads, 25 tails, um, uh, so to speak uh, that's when we have a decent probability and then from that point on uh, the probability just drops so uh, I mean I'm not gonna do this in uh, in depth for the graph but you can you can kind of tell from this data that we've got that if we plot the probability uh, on the y-axis versus n how many uh, macro states we're getting uh, how many heads we are getting um, we will see that uh, it's uh, it's very low towards the ends here it almost hits zero here and here right as we have uh, uh, either uh, to the extreme edge of 51 or the ultimate edge of 50 50 and then it's as we get closer to 50 here Right, I, I mean, I don't know where 50 is. We'd have to take more data or we have to find the equation and plot it. But generally speaking, it's going to be sort of like a distribution that looks like this. It's going to peak at some point and then and then drop down. Um, and this is the, the graph that they ask to plot in 5G. And heads as a function of n. Okay, that concludes this question.